Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the idea behind microbiome or bacteria inside our guts once again. But this time focusing on some of the recent studies in regards to how it seems to affect our health and in many cases not for the best. In other words, we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in how bacteria inside our guts seems to sometimes negatively affect our health and in ways we could not imagine before with at least one study potentially even suggesting that bacteria inside our guts might even influence our aging directly, as in our microbiome seems to directly guide our aging process, in some cases causing some people to become much older and much weaker. And so let's talk about this in more detail, but I guess let's start with the basics first in regards to this microbiome we're discussing. Now you might have seen some of the previous videos that should be in the description, but in essence our body is filled with various microbes inside and outside. Pretty much every single organ we have contains trillions and trillions of microorganisms, including bacteria, archaea, fungi, and viruses. And they all seem to do different things on and in our bodies, and they all seem to be very different. As a matter of fact, every single person seems to have their own unique microbiome. But we also continuously exchange this microbiome with everyone and everything around us, even our pets, our friends, our children, and everything around us. So this is something that continuously evolves, but evolves differently depending on the person. And as I've discussed previously, there are more bacterial cells inside our body than actual physical human cells. There could be up to 100 trillion microorganisms inside of us. And as a result, there are a lot of studies out there that try to understand how all of this influences our lives. For example, in this slightly older study, researchers assessed how the temperature changes in human body when the person experiences what's known as sepsis, a somewhat serious infection that very often affects several organs. But here they were also able to collect stool samples assessing the types of bacteria in patients' guts. And they actually discovered that fever or body temperature seemed to differ depending on the person, but was correlated to the type of bacteria they had. In other words, here they directly linked bacterial type to overall body temperature. And to prove this point even further, they then basically recreated this in mice. Here they had healthy mice, but some of them did not contain any microbiome inside. And turns out that the mice without bacteria in their guts experienced much lower body temperatures compared to mice that had bacteria. Likewise, by removing some of the bacteria with antibiotics, the overall temperature in mice dropped as well. And here, the same family of bacteria seemed to be associated with fluctuations in temperature. In other words, they found a direct relationship between gut bacteria and body temperature in humans. With certain bacteria, such as various types of bacillus bacteria, dramatically increasing body temperature compared to everything else. And this is actually an intriguing discovery because here they were able to explain why in the last 200 years the average temperature in human body actually kind of dropped. The temperature has been steadily declining since the middle of 19th century. This is something that's been reported many times before. And here this can be explained as the change of microbiome in our guts. Okay, so they affect our temperature, but that's just the first step. Also, in a separate study from Hungary, researchers decided to do something a little bit different. Here they assessed athletes and collected their stool or their poop once again. In this case, studying 80 amateur rowers of different ages, between 38 to 84. But apart from taking the poop sample, they also collected blood samples and asked these rowers to perform certain exercises. Basically here they were looking for different biological age markers in order to determine the true age of each of the participants. In other words, if someone is 40 years old, they might actually still have a much younger body, which can then be measured through molecular markers. And so in this 2023 study, scientists discovered that by having a slightly altered microbiome, or basically microbiome that was more chaotic and even more diverse, it seemed to result in much lower levels of fitness and even accelerated rate of biological aging. With the conclusion being that, with higher diversity of microbes in our bodies, we also basically experience higher number of pathogens, which can create problems long term. And though in this case, physical age very likely played a big role too, and which was assessed in a different study, one of the other major discoveries from the study was the link between anti-inflammatory bacteria and a dramatic reduction in biological aging and also increased fitness. Whereas participants whose samples contained more inflammatory bacteria basically had the reverse, their bodies appeared much older and they were not as physically fit. For example, for men, this bacterium, referred to as actinobacteria, was one of the major reasons for increased inflammation and higher age. 
where, strangely enough, for female athletes, it was actually something different. It was bacteria known as bacteroides. Now, this is obviously still preliminary, but there seems to be a direct link between types of bacteria in our bellies and the overall aging of our bodies. We still have no idea what bacteria does what, and there are so many of them that it will be very difficult to list all of them and to determine all of their roles. But here it does become clear that certain bacteria potentially cause us to become maybe weaker, maybe older. Which is pretty much the same topic that shows up in many papers in the last few years. But exactly how it works and exactly what happens is actually still a little bit unclear. But more and more evidence has now come out showing us that gut microbes seem to play a direct role in controlling our aging. And there are a few studies in the description that try to explain how this works. Now, for most of our lives, up until we get to about 50 or so, the microbiome inside our bodies is usually dominated by a few core species. These are basically specialized bacteria adapted to live inside of us, with the exact proportions being different depending on the person. This was actually explored back in 2016 in this study, basically by assessing the microbiome of people with extreme longevity. And the main discovery was that at least three families of bacteria seem to be the core. But this core microbiome seems to lose its power as we age. And these subdominant species that are usually present in very, very small numbers in the beginning slowly start to take over as we age. These subdominant species very likely come from the environment around us. And so as we get to about 65 to 75, our microbiome changes dramatically. The core begins to decline, loses its power, and these subdominant species start to dominate and create very disruptive environment. But this is where things get a little bit different. For some people, I guess if they eat the right things or if they get lucky with their family, friends and pets that introduce various bacteria into them, they might have beneficial effects overall. But in other cases, these effects are more neutral or even negative. Which is very likely one of the main reasons around this age our body starts to actually change quite dramatically. And one of the biggest problems during this time is the loss of what's known as barrier function. This is when our intestines are able to control microbes and are able to confine them to certain locations, usually through gut wall and relatively thick mucus. But as we age, the barrier weakens, and a lot of these additional species start to invade and can sometimes even enter the bloodstream. They don't cause sepsis, but they put a lot of pressure on the immune system that now has to constantly respond to these invasions, which basically causes a low level of inflammation in the entire body which is precisely what we usually see in older people, and more importantly, is precisely what was actually recreated in various experiments in mice. In many cases, when young mice received immune system from a much older mice, surprisingly, they developed a microbiome that was extremely similar to an older mice, and vice versa. If you introduce a younger immune system into the older mice, they tend to become younger, which kind of implies that the aging of the immune system seems to directly connect to the microbiome changes and specifically tends to degrade over time because of these microbial invasions. So here a lot of studies determine that it actually might be the immune system that kind of keeps everything in check for the first 50 years, but then as it becomes older and less efficient, that's when bacteria starts to take over. This is often referred to as dysbiotic microenvironment. And there was actually a somewhat interesting experiment involving mice that illustrated this very well. Here this involved what's known as progeroid mice, or mice specifically designed to study aging. In this case, by using what's known as progeroid syndrome. And all of this is based on a specific genetic mutation. Mutation of a gene called POLG, which usually provides proteins involved in repair of mitochondria. But when this gene is damaged, mitochondria start to age very rapidly, and as a result, mice or actually any organism, because this also exists in humans, start to age rapidly as a result of mitochondrial dysfunction. And so even though a typical mouse might live for three years, a progeroid mice usually only lives five months. And so many genetic experiments on aging very often involve these mice. As you can see from these images, these mice age very quickly. They lose a lot of mass and fur, they lose a lot of weight, but more importantly, they actually develop a lot of inflammation inside their guts while also exhibiting a somewhat abnormal immune response. And so there were actually a few experiments involving these mice, but specifically focusing on microbiomes. And the thing is, when mice with this genetic disability were created in a way where they had no microbiome, for really bizarre reasons, they actually ended up living much, much longer. In other words, when they had no microbiome inside their guts, they showed less signs of aging and their lifespan increased by at least one third. It was still not as long as a typical mouse, but much longer than other mice with this genetic disorder. And this was a really bizarre discovery, 
it really implied that the microbiome inside the guts of these mice was causing them to die much faster. With the conclusion being that it's very likely because of this immune response and because in order to maintain this microbiome, the body has to produce so much more energy, putting a huge toll on the metabolism, which obviously depends on mitochondria. But because in these mice mitochondria were damaged, by not requiring more energy and by having less immune response, the mice could live just a little bit longer. But the conclusion was still very intriguing. It basically implied that the gut microbiome, despite possibly having some benefits, also puts a huge amount of pressure on our body. So much pressure, as a matter of fact, that it starts to influence the immune system, causing it to go into overdrive and eventually wear us down. So this was a really bizarre conclusion. It suggested that bacteria-free animals were actually healthier. So does this mean that we should maybe try to get rid of all bacteria inside of us so that we can maybe live longer? Well, I guess that's easy to say, but difficult to achieve. In the real world, we're still going to end up with microbiome of some sorts, just because it's impossible to not have it. As a matter of fact, many studies on, for example, antibiotics also discovered that by taking antibiotics that can possibly reduce microbiome, the overall inflammation levels and the overall aging also potentially increased. In other words, there is just no easy solution. But a healthy microbiome is definitely important. We know it provides a lot of important functions, including actually affecting our brains and our mental states in direct ways, you can explore this idea in one of the previous videos in the description, and directly influences cell development, cognition, and behavior. So having a healthier microbiome might be more important. Which basically takes us to the overall conclusion from all of these studies. In order to maintain this healthy microbiome and to prevent the immune system from getting out of control and from causing more inflammation, ironically, there are just a few solutions. One of them, the most obvious one, is healthy diet. Uh, yeah, duh. The other one is exercise. Also, duh. But surprisingly, the third one is maybe not something we think about too much. Social life. Not because it's good for you to interact, but because many studies discover that we continuously share and acquire bacteria from everyone else. And so by interacting with people who are younger and healthier, we might actually surprisingly benefit from all of this by acquiring their bacteria as well. So technically, you can actually make yourself healthier by spending time with younger people or by spending time with a lot of people that are much healthier than you. As bizarre as it sounds, it seems to have actual scientific evidence. But in essence, pretty much every single study, including this recent one, keep discovering the same thing. The microbiome inside of us is super important, it seems to have a lot of control, and in many cases affects our health directly. But as we age, the bacteria inside of us sort of become a little bit more detrimental and potentially become dangerous because the immune system in our body experiences a lot of trouble controlling them, which actually ends up taking a toll on our body, drains our energy, makes us older, and basically enters a downward spiral, whereas you become older and older, you become weaker and weaker, and the bacteria inside of you become stronger and stronger. It's the bacteria inside of you, and at some point, the bacteria take over. As in when the person dies, the bacteria literally start to consume the person from the inside. I mean, as grim as it sounds, that's kind of what happens. And at least one researcher, Dario Ricardo Valenzano, that specializes in all of this, after years of studies came to the same conclusion. That's actually the true intention for all of these bacteria. This whole time their goal was to basically eat us. Or at least he doesn't think we should see them as our friends. In a sense that, yeah, they do help in some cases, but our body has to actively protect itself and has to actively regulate those bacteria, which takes a huge toll on the body itself. And so ultimately, not having these bacteria and not having a microbiome might be the best solution. It's just impractical and impossible. So yeah, definitely a lot of intriguing, somewhat unnerving and somewhat unusual discoveries from just the last few years. And that's on top of some of the additional discoveries that have not been confirmed yet, such as for example this study that even linked a very common vision disorder known as glaucoma to a potential damage of certain cells as they interact with various other cells inside our guts. In other words, a lot of problems we have might also be directly linked to some of the stuff happening inside our intestines. And because glaucoma is actually kind of difficult to treat, if this is true, this could be a groundbreaking discovery. But we don't really know much else about this yet, so we'll probably discuss this in some of the future videos. Which of course means that we're going to come back and discuss more of these discoveries about microbe guts, their effects on us, and what they do to us in many videos in the future. But you can also find some of the previous discoveries from at least a few videos that should be in the description below. On that note, 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying one for person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.